All right, so time for another video. Well, there comes the challenge of trying to get her started up. I think I may have figured something out. Hopefully I didn't just jinx myself. It's funny because on the 303 in this setup, it's like I gotta like talk myself into launching. That's never been the case. All right, one more big deep breath. Here we go. So yeah, today what we're gonna do is uh, cross country over to James Stewart, uh, James Stewart Compound. If you don't know James Stewart or Bubba Stewart, uh, maybe you've heard of the Bubba Scrub. It's a uh, supercross, motocross guy, but he's a um, super fast supercross racer, motocross racer that has been out of the sport for several years now, five years now, six years. But he invented uh, the Bubba Scrub. The Bubba Scrub is basically where you come up to the face of a jump faster than you normally would and then throw the bike down. Um, so that you don't actually get as much lift off the face of the jump and you basically screw up the face of it and you carry more speed and stay lower get down to the ground faster that's where we're gonna go we're gonna go check out his compound he's got a little brother Malcolm Stewart his Malcolm Stewart still races and uh, he's kind of he's been in the sport for a long time now this is um, Bach Tower right here with the Sun coming up behind it Bach Tower is the highest point of ground elevation in uh, Florida in all of Florida this is pretty uh, much right smack dab in the central Florida. 183 feet of elevation above uh, above sea level. And uh, the airport, for comparison, is 127 feet, where I just launched from. Right ahead of me is the Chalet Suzanne. Chalet Suzanne is a old airport. It's been around for a long time. People used to fly into, fly into this airport back in Lake Wells' heyday. So anyway, the Chalet Suzanne is where Bikina and I got married last uh, Thanksgiving. We did a little cross country from the airport, from Lake Wells, and flew over here individually. We landed, and it was uh, also a class cross country, and a bunch of alumni had showed up, a bunch of just local friends, and there must have been 25 of us or so, 25, 30 of us that flew in over here and landed, and we had a ceremony. It was posted on the Aviator Show uh, YouTube channel, and uh, it was a little awkward of a video, but it was a lot of fun. We all had a great time. But yeah, this is a pretty cool little airport. This is where my, uh, I did my first touch and goes on the Cessna 120. We got married right here. This is the Chalet Suzanne, and uh, we have instructors that live over here, several of them. Fletcher McFletcherson, his trailer's right over here, and we got Mr. Mikey Brown. Right over here is where uh, Eric and Nell live, kind of around that lake. Sometimes we'll go and buzz them first thing in the morning. Um, I know they, uh, I know they really appreciate that. But yeah, it was a, it was a pretty cool highlight. I mean, not many people can say they flew to their own wedding and uh, landed and then flew out. We we tanned them back out, which was, I mean, that was a, it was a great time. I, I guess that leads me to my why I'm making the video. I'm not much. I'm not much of a vlogger or someone that likes to talk much on camera. So there's a lot of reasons why I've been making these videos, getting in front of the camera. One was for the instructional videos. I just wanted to put information out there, and that's still kind of my main motivation is to put information out there, whether it be to answer questions that I get a lot or just to get safety and, and thought processes and stuff like that. But from what I have learned over the last two and a half years of teaching paramotoring, and um, so I like to get that stuff out there. You know, if, if it makes people safer, or if people at least enjoy the content, then it's worth it. I'm not someone that likes to watch vlogging stuff personally. I like information and I like like short montage videos. And that's typically what I make because that's what I like. But the other reason I like, I like to make the montage videos is just because it helps me relive moments. 
I love to go back and watch my old videos from 10, 15 years ago and relive that moment. It's like I was there all over again. I, I remember what the air smelled like, what the temperature was, what I was feeling emotionally, and it's just a cool feeling. Unfortunately, I used to post a lot of my stuff on Vimeo because way back in the day when I was making videos, YouTube sucks. Like, you'd post a video and it just was like, became super pixelated. Unfortunately, Vimeo changed their policy a few years ago, and if you stop paying for their service, all your stuff got deleted that was over 10 years old. Uh, had I known that, I would have went and downloaded all those videos, re-uploaded them, and um, and it would have been fine. This is a uh, like gun range right over here. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that gun range was there. Huh. And then I started chasing motocross, motocrossers with drones. And that was ultimately why I got into drones, because I wanted to chase motocrossers. And I was one of the first ones that ever did that. And... Um, and I was definitely one of the first ones to ever chase people through actual woods with a, a drone. And some of those videos went, you know, somewhat viral. And I ended up getting sponsored, traveling around the world, racing drones. And super cool. And long story short, I met Eric and the Paradigm team. And I was like, that's what I've been dreaming of. That's what I've been dreaming of my entire life. I guess I better check and see where I'm at. I may be already getting close. I am a little bit too far to the east. I'll spin back around over here. And I think it's just right over there somewhere. I don't know, this video may be boring for a lot of people, but Bikina drives a lot. She kind of gets tired of listening to music, and she says that she turns on my YouTube videos and just listens to me talk. And uh, that kind of melted my heart a little bit. <laughs> I love her so much. Yeah, I won't get too, goop too goopy with you, but basically I love her very much. and. She's requested that I make more videos so that she can listen to me talk. <laughs> and so yeah, that's part of why I'm making the video. I'm trying to get her off the 27. Oh, there it is. I almost passed it right up. The James Stewart compound. Let's come in with all. Oh, let's come in with a nice dramatic approach here. Kind of scoping it out for her power lines. It's kind of one of my big fears of power lines and water. Uh, right over there, probably another eight miles or so. It's 
It's what I would call a congested area, though. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fly over there. Ooh, ooh, a little. This is a garbage pit over here. It's like a sand pit that they've turned into a dump as well. They fill, they fill it back up with trash. All right, I really want to scope this out before I like just start jumping down in here. And then there's some kind of factory here. Look at all these cars. Is that a car? What's something with cars? tighter than I thought. The weight shift on this wing is just so crazy. It's got so much weight shift. Would you just look at that? Just look at it. I'm barely moving. I'm probably 200 feet, 250, 250 feet, barely moving. Jump on bar while I'm trying to figure this place out where it's at. I don't even know what to look for. I forgot what it was. I don't know, but it's called something. Train. Actually, maybe I bookmarked it. Maybe I saved it on my maps. Fly right over this swamp here like a genius. No flotation and a... Yeah, it's starting to get a little bumpy. It's starting to get a little bumpy, boys. I mean, I am flying like right into rotor over this hill. So let me find the best course of action. I probably could just go around. I really don't want to. I should probably just get elevation and try and punch through. Isn't it kind of funny how like schools almost was like a jail? That's what I felt like when I was in school. I felt like I was in jail. I was not a school person. I did not like school at all. This is so cool. I mean, this is even bigger than I thought. So you got your like uh, switching yard, I guess is what that is down there. You've got your stations where they work on them. You got a 
another switching station with uh, some hangers. We got like uh, some places to ride around. This is pretty cool, man. My brother's super into this, my youngest brother, Ethan. Here's one of those, uh, what do they call that? A turnabout or a turning, I don't know. Look, they even got a little tunnel. That's so cool. They've got a little tunnel in Florida. That's freaking cool. I better pay attention here before I fly into some giant 440 volt power lines. Yeah, that's pretty neat. They've even got RV hookups so people can come and, uh, huh, that's so cool. I like the idea of um, occasionally just being like, oh, I just had a motor out, where am I going to land? And this is a pretty good scenario, actually. It just popped in my head. Where am I going to land? I'm probably going to land right over here, closer to the... Actually, I'm probably going to land right back over here. I can make it. It's going to be somewhat of a downwind landing, but I'm pretty sure downwind here, there's going to be no wind. Yeah, I probably just would turn left and land back over here. I consider this a proper cross country. But yeah, that's Buck Tower. I'm not parked, but I'm barely moving. Probably five miles per hour. Pretty cool. Pretty cool Buck Tower. It's a beautiful area. It's like a little garden with a bunch of trails, paved trails, and there's some dirt trails in there. Getting close to making it back. Uh, you know what I should do? I should probably check fuel. I think I'm good, but. Look at that. Look at that. That's would you just look at it? Look at all the, look at all the gas I still have. I've been flying for an hour and eleven minutes. And I still have this much gas. That's a lot. Whatever it is, it's a lot. It's more than half. I bet that's less than four liters an hour. I could fly around the entire town. Got plenty of gas. Why don't we do that? Why don't we fly over to the sand pit over here? I think they're... I've never actually flown over here when there's enough of a breeze from the east to uh, Ridge Store, though. Um, but I've heard stories of people trying to be trespassed out of here. Pretty cool. You guys have ever experienced foot dragging in sand, uh, it will destroy your prop, especially an e-prop. So make sure you put some prop tape on there. What I use is, uh, it's like one inch thick or one inch wide racer tape, and that's what it's called, racer tape. It's on Amazon. And just get the one inch wide stuff. And uh, it lasts for a pretty good while when you put it on your prop. And it's like, what, 17 bucks? But that, I still have the same roll that I've had for two and a half years, so it lasts forever. And um, put that stuff on, at least on the last six inches of your prop, because that's primarily where you're going to receive the damage. And uh, it will help against rocks and chips and uh, sandblasting, because when you foot drag, you're sandblasting that prop. And all it takes is about 30 feet of foot dragging sand to destroy a prop. I don't have power floats, so I'm not going to get too crazy. But, uh, yeah, this is like a barge or dredge or I don't know what they call this thing. Pretty cool. Whatever it is. I'm not entirely sure what they would do with it. I'm sure they're... Huh, I wonder, can they get sand? Can they get sand out of the bottom of a 
pit like this when it's filled with water or something like that? Maybe that's what they're doing. Is that what I don't even know? Is that what a dredge is? I don't even know. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I should make a cool Tucker style video where I fly to Rural King and buy some new boots. Yeah, I flew my paramotor over to Rural King, bought me a new trailer hitch and some boots, and flew back. That'd be a that'd be a new uh, new style video, right? I'm sure I get like all the views, all 13 of them. <laughs> hey, honey, I'm gonna go fly my paramotor over to Tractor Supply and buy some uh, transmission fluid. You need anything? Nah, I don't think so. You give me some feed for the horses. Ah, uh, no, I can't carry that much. I'll get you a salt block. What, what, what kind of things could you buy from a rural king and carry in your paramotor? That's not necessarily a parking lot I want to land at, but I think there's an area, there's actually a field right over there I can land at. I feel like that needs to be a thing. Fly to, fly to rural king. Has that been done yet? Can I get all the viral views for that? Jack, enjoy the video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit, hit the bell button for the notifications when I posted a new video. And make sure you thumbs up, guys. It really helps me out a lot. I'm just kidding, guys. If you like the video, great. If not, let me know. Tell me how I can improve and how it sucked. That'd be great. I do think I'm going to continue to make more, like I said, just for, you know, if not just documenting it for progression and helping get information out there, but also for Bikina. Because I love my wife and she's requested them, so I'm going to comply. She's a pretty awesome woman that flies with me and uh, I couldn't ask for a better life partner. So, this one goes out to you, Bikina. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Alright, guys. I'm going to continue to fly around and I'm going to crank some tunes while I fly around. So, uh, let's crank the montage.